Good evening, everybody. Thank you for showing up tonight. My name is Kim, and I am from Nana's Keepsake. I am the owner and creator. Um, this is my first live, so I am quite nervous, um, but we'll get through it. So I think the first thing that um, I'm going to do is I'm gonna uh, connect uh, to my laptop so that way I can see your comments. I do have um, my good friend Julie who is gonna help me with comments. So if I miss a question or whatever, and if she doesn't answer it or myself, then just um, ask it again. Hi Pearl, thank you so much for showing up. Hey Becky, thank you guys. I'm really happy that you guys all showed up. So let me find me on my laptop real quick. So then that way I can see the comments a lot better. Okay, here I am. All right, so we're gonna get started. And the first thing I wanna show you guys is we're gonna be using the Unique in the Creek uh, large uh, flower board. I have loaded um, most of the board with my zip ties, um, but I did leave a few holes open because I know uh, some of you have, that have never used the Unique in the Creek board, um, you don't know exactly where to place your zip ties and what holes um, that you need to put them in. But what I do want to do first is I always like to put in um, my pipe cleaner. So that's where it's going to uh, hang. And as you can see right here, there's two holes that are kind of indented. Um, that's where I'm going to put the, my pipe cleaner. So that, let me bring the down a little bit so you guys can see so I'm going to uh, fold it in half and what I like to do is I like to um, kind of twist my pipe cleaner maybe about two inches a couple times so then that way I kind of get um, my my loop and then and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, stick it into the hole right here. And then I'm going to kind of twist it. Bring it back through the hole. I probably do a little bit of an overkill, but, you know, I want to make sure that whoever is going to hang this either on their door or on their um their wall in their house that we don't have to worry that the the pipe cleaner is going to um, you know fall off or even scratch somebody's door and then I'm gonna turn it over and I kind of twist it in the back again and then I'm gonna uh, bring it through the hole the two holes once more I hope you guys can see hi Chris hi Kathy Thanks so much for coming. And then here we got the, the nice little hoop. And then I'm going to twist it in the front. And kind of just, just leave it like that. I'm not going to do anything with it. Now what I'm going to do is I want to... I left three holes open. Um, so that way you guys can... Uh, see where I put the zip ties and if you've never worked with um, zip ties uh, the one thing that you want to make sure is before you put them into the board is you have a flat side and then you have kind of like a bumpy side you always want to make sure that the the bumpy side is facing up so what we're going to do is we're going to in um, row two of the unique in a creek board um, they have five rows. This is row one. A lot of times um, people will make the either the sunflower uh, wreaths or the um, uh, other petal wreaths and they put their leaves here. But we're going to use row two. So right here is where I'm going to stick my pipe cleaner. I mean my zip tie. I'm going to go in the hole and I am going to come up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click it 
So you have you hear that little sound. You don't have to go very far, just a little click, and then you just want to make sure that it's not gonna come out. If for some reason that you were gonna put it in wrong, say you're gonna put it in backwards by mistake, it'll go in, but it won't stay. So then you just know that you have to um, turn it. So now we're gonna go into the next hole, go down, and you're gonna come up. And then the last one. And so there are your zip ties on the board. So now we're going to start with um, row two. This is um, a new pedal. It's my first time doing it. I kind of got inspired. I watched um, Stacy Chadwick from Your Front Porch um, do this pedal. And I also uh, checked out Michelle from Monkey's Creation. Uh, she also um, did the, the uh, pedal. It's called a pinwheel. And hers had a different uh, spin on it, um, which was uh, really cool. But because I just saw Stacy's, I thought I would try this. So um, tonight I'm going to be using um, this uh, fresh green poly uh, burlap mesh. Um, it's one of my favorite, especially the color. But um, I'm going to show you how I did this pedal just so you understand. So let me grab the mesh. And whenever uh, we do a lot of the, the petals, we always kind of want to make sure that it's curl side up. Um, there's some petals that you may see people do where they lay it down and it's curling down. But for this one, we're going to do it up. And what I like to do so that way my petals are always the same is... I turn it into a diamond and I always have my my nice edge to the left of me towards the top and also the the nice edge to the bottom to my right and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the one corner and you're gonna bring it down to the other corner and kind of make sure that it comp you know lines up all the corners And then what you're going to do is you're kind of going to imagine that Im imaginary line that goes from the corner to the middle. And the easiest way to um, kind of remember is put your thumb on the corner and put your finger up towards the top and just kind of stretch it a little bit. And then because I'm um, left-handed, I'm going to grab the right and I'm going to bring it down on that kind of imaginary line and then I'm going to uh, crease it down. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this corner and I'm going to come down and meet to the corner, other corner. So then it kind of looks like kind of like a, a diamond and it's the same on both sides. I hope you can see that. Thanks, Dorothy. Oh, thank you, Judy. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to lay it on the board. And um, my board obviously has measurements. And what I like to do is um, go. you can either go up two inches or three inches. I've been doing three inches because it hides a little bit of my edges. And I'm just going to kind of pinch in the center and then pull the sides together and so that forms my petal <coughs> excuse me and then what I'm going to do is I'm for right now I'm just going to take one of my clips <coughs> excuse me and I'm going to clip it I'll show you another one right away Again, we're going to do curl side up. I like to have my factory edge um, to the left of me at the top. 
and at the bottom on the right. I'm going to bring my top corner down to the bottom and kind of, you know, make sure that my corners meet nice and pretty. <coughs> and then I'm going to put my, my thumb on the corner and my finger up at the top. So it's kind of like that little imaginary line. I'm going to kind of pull it up a little bit. And then I'm going to bring this corner down. And it'll go past. And that's okay. You want it to. Because then it meets nicely along this edge. Then I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to bring the other corner to meet this corner. And as you can see, I got a, a, a really nice point. <coughs> and then I'm going to um, bring it up about three inches, kind of pinch it in the center, and then kind of bring my sides in to meet. And there is my uh, pinwheel pe pedal. So for the first thing we're going to start on the board, I am going to start where it says number two at the top, and I'm going to put my first petal in. And basically all you got to do is slide it in, kind of make sure it's about, you know, a, a finger width, and then pull the zip tie. A lot of times I take my needle nose and I kind of pull it a little bit. And so that my petals will lay really nice, I'm going to do every other one all the way around uh, round two. So we're just going to do every other one. Hey, Marcella, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for coming. So how is everybody doing tonight? Right now we're in a, a severe winter storm. We've kind of had sleet and rain all day, so I was praying to goodness that I wasn't going to lose power on my first live because I would have been, I would have been panicking big time. So a little bit about me. I started making wreaths um, probably about three years ago uh, during the pandemic. Um, I've been kind of an avid, avid uh, crocheter and cross stitcher and, and things like that, but I wanted to try something new, so that's why I decided to go into uh, wreath making. I didn't realize how addicting it is and how many different variations and and everything and and uh, basically the supplies that it costs um to uh to make sometimes these wreaths but i love it it's definitely my passion i love seeing everybody else's um inspiration and um and, and go from there so again we're just going every other hole right now until we get to the to the end Just sticking them into the my zip tie. And I just broke that zip tie, so let me grab another one real quick. <coughs> Sometimes that happens. They break real fast. Oh, thank you, thank you, Tina. I appreciate that. I'm probably my worst critic on my on my wreaths, but I do I do love them. So before I start to the the every other um, zip ties in the same row, I'm gonna cut these zip ties real quick. Um, for some of you who don't know, this is called a zip tie gun. You can get them on Amazon. I think they're about fifteen dollars. Um, they're a lifesaver for people 
who may have problems with their hands um, instead of trying to you know cut the zip tie and all you do is you're gonna there's like a little uh, opening right here where you just kind of fit your zip tie in and you click it a few times it actually pulls the zip tie tight and it cuts it so it's kind of like a two-in-one good evening Patricia thank you so much for joining if I miss somebody, I'm really sorry. I'm just so glad to see you guys here. So we're just going to cut these real quick. And then we're going to start on the other uh, zip ties that are still on row two. And then you'll kind of see how this the wreath is forming. Also on these that I did just kind of clip together so you guys can see, I am going to trim it because... Um, I don't want the real long tails. I'm always afraid that it's going to, you know, maybe pop up and kind of push the, the flower petals up. So I'm just going to shove this in. And then as you see, it's going to lay on top of it like that. Hi, Rebecca. Welcome from Virginia. Oh. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know why these this batch of ties are breaking on me. Thank you, Dorothy. Oh, thank you, Diane. Appreciate that. Like I said, this is my first time doing this petal. Um, I just thought for Easter it would be such a pretty wreath once it was done. And especially the colors, the the um, fresh green uh, poly burlap with the pink and, and a little bit of white. And then um, I had picked out a, a, a kind of like a jute fabric mesh. And I thought that would kind of pull it all together. This goes this way. I kind of cheated. I did most of my petals last night. So that way you guys weren't sitting here watching me make a whole bunch of petals. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Three more on that row and then we can uh, go to the next row. <coughs> wow, Marcella. Hey, Julie. Julie has been um, helping me kind of get ready for this and pushing me a little bit. She's been wanting me to do lies for a while. And uh, all day today while I was at work, I was all panicky. I even had a review while I was at work today. So I had to try and keep myself together. <laughs> so I'm just, once again, I'm just cutting the zip ties off. And as you can see, I mean, that makes a really nice full wreath so far. All right, so now we're going to start on the, the next row. And I decided to use um, white poly burlap. And there's only eight of the zip ties in row three. And I did those in um, the, you know, this the original holes and I don't know if you guys can see the back pull that up a little bit so as you can see I did original holes um, on row two on row three row four but then on row five 
I did not only the original holes, but also shared holes. And what they mean by shared holes is these ones right here, they're sharing the hole next to the original holes, if that makes sense. I hope that did. Yes, we will make a list of, um, uh, Julie has uh, did that for me already. So after the live, we will definitely post that for you guys. So if you're interested in, um, you know, getting all the, any of the materials, you can. So let me show you how to do the, the petals again, just in case for anybody who came in, came in late. So what you're going to do is curl side up, factory up on my left top and on my bottom right. I'm going to bring the corner down to the other corner. And kind of line everything up so it looks looks nice. And then what I'm going to do is put my thumb at this bottom corner and up at the top, kind of like my imaginary line coming down. I'm going to kind of pull it up a little bit. I'm going to take this corner and bring it down to meet where my thumb is. And I'm going to fold, fold it down. And then I flip it over. And then I'm going to take this corner and I'm going to meet it down to the other corner again. And that's where you get your pinwheel petal. And then from there, I'm going to go up about three inches and I'm going to squeeze it in the middle and squeeze the side. And then I can stick that right in the wreath. <coughs> Let me clip that one and we'll do it one more time. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. Not used to doing all this talking. Again, curl side up factory up at the top and the bottom I'm gonna take my corner and bring it down to the other corner I'm gonna uh, line up my mesh so that way the corners kind of they meet and they look pretty and then I'm gonna take this and bring it down on that imaginary line I'm going to flip it and then I'm going to take this corner and I'm going to bring that down to meet the corner at the bottom. And then we're going to scrunch and pull in the sides. And there's the petal. I'll bring the board back and now we're just going to start um, sticking these petals in one thing I did notice and I'm going to have to I'll have to tweak this after this live but I should have made sure that my petals were going the exact same way there's a few of them that uh, aren't so I will take it apart and fix that so you want to make sure that they're Whatever way you put them on the board, make sure that's the way they're going all the way around. So now I'm going to put, put this in row three. And as you can see, by putting the first one, it kind of lines up with that outer one that's tucked behind the two. Um, so it kind of fills it in really nice. Thanks, Julie. And you know, one thing too I noticed is that once you get all your petals made, I think that's probably about the hardest, is cutting the mesh, folding the petals, um, you know, putting them in a container or whatever. I bought one of these from the Dollar Tree and you know, when I'm making petals, I put a little rubber band on them that I buy from the Dollar Tree and I shove them in there, you know, load up my wreath board and then just start, um, putting my petals in and it seems to go really fast unless you're breaking zip ties like I am. 
yes, I did wear wood burn, um, especially poly burlap. Thanks, Chris. Uh, poly burlap has a tendency to fray like the Dickens. So, yeah, I do um, wood burn my mesh. In fact, even on petals, you're not going to see the edge. Um, I pretty much wood burn all the time. I'm just, I just worried that I'm going to see the fray. You don't have to. I've seen a lot of people where they actually just use a rotary cutter and they just rotary cut their pieces and, you know, make their petal and put it in their wreath and um, it turns out beautiful. But I just, I sometimes get a little excessive with how I do things. Okay, two more. Let me cut those little tips off. And then we'll get those these in right away. Oh, that one's going in the wrong way, so I'm going to turn it. Wood burn means it's a um, uh, it's a wood burning tool that some people use to um, wood burn pieces of wood. They may engrave things. Um, us wreath makers, we use the wood burner to um, cut our mesh. So that way, um, because most of the mesh is made out of plastic, um, by wood burning it, it kind of seals it. So that way it doesn't fray. I mean, if I was to cut this with um, a rotary cutter, this would just be coming apart like crazy. So that's why we use, use the wood burner. Good question. No, I'm not still smoking. I want to. <laughs> Especially after today, I definitely want to have a cigarette. Okay, I'm going to cut my zip ties. You're welcome, Marcella. That was a good question because a lot of people, when you say wood burner, they, they're like wondering, what in the world? Why would you use a wood burner on, on mesh? But most of the mesh, um, especially poly burlap, they got a, a plastic running through it, so... When you use it, it just um, melts it so nicely, so that way it keeps it from fraying. Decalme poly deco mesh, that's another one that frays really bad. Okay, so next color that I'm going to do is called the pink um, poly burlap. And this one too, I would burn all three of my colors, the poly burlap, I cut them 10 by 10. Thanks, Dorothy. So again, we're going to bring it down to the corner. Kind of make sure our, our corners are nice and pretty. I'm going to kind of just, you know, squeeze it up a little bit and then bring my other corner down. Thank you, Tina. Ooh, pink. I know, right? It, and it's a really pretty color. And now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to bring that corner down so I have a really nice point at the top. Squeeze my middle and bring in my sides. And there is my pinwheel petal. And we'll clip it. <coughs> Once again, curl side up. I know it does kind of look peach, but no, it's a, believe it or not, um, they have a, a light pink and they have this pink that, and they're almost really close um, in color, but this one's just a, kind of like a mauvey pink. 
So now I'm gonna put my thumb on this corner, my finger up at the top. I'm gonna stretch it a little bit. I'm taking my right side and I'm gonna bring it down flatten it out a little bit I'm gonna flip it over and then I'm gonna bring this top down to meet that corner and making sure that I have a really nice um, point at the top turn it to the side and like I said some people do two inches from this tip to here I go in the uh, three inches just to I don't know kind of hide a lot of my edges and then I am going to clip it where did I get the mesh Becky I got the mesh um, let's see um, Julie do you remember what I told you craft outlet I got the pink from Nancy, you should know me. I don't show anything hard to do. So there's there's that petal. So now I'm going to bring the board back. And now we're going to work on row three. No, row four. Sorry, row four. And I went into every single set of holes. So there's a total of eight. Uh, make sure that they're all going the same way. And again, when I put it into the zip tie, I want to make sure it's about a finger um, length down from the end of the the, um, the mesh. And then I'm just going to pull my, my zip tie. And as you can see, that one lines up with the green. Can you see that? The flower is called, from um, what I understand, it's called um, the pinwheel petal. Um, Stacy Chadwick also did it um, just recently. That was kind of my inspiration. She did an Easter wreath showing this petal. But Monkey, um, or they call her Michelle from Monkey's Creation, um, she also um, did a pinwheel petal. I believe she was the, the creator of it. Um, and she did that maybe about three years ago. I found it today on her YouTube channel, and I watched how she did it. Um, hers was a little bit more fluffy and really pretty. She, and she did it in like a yellow poly burlap. It was very pretty. So now we're just going to finish putting these, um, these pink ones in. Yes, pinwheel petal. I guess they call it a pinwheel because of the fact that it's the same on both sides. Every now and then too, even though you um, would burn your edges, you might get a little stragglers of the, um, the burlap. I just cut it off. Yes, there are uh, quite a few people, but those are the two that I, I know that I watch their their videos and, and show, show how to do it. Hey, Julia. Julia is one of my uh, co-workers from work, and today she said she was going to join me to see my first live. I'm sure tomorrow she'll probably be making fun of me at work. <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. I do too. Like I said, that green is so pretty. And um, mixing it with the, the pink and that just really just screams Easter, don't you think? Okay, two more left. I'm going to cut those little tails off and then we'll be on to the row five and then the center I can't wait to show you guys the center
Hi, Debbie. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Very funny. And then on this last one, um, what I'm going to do, because I don't want it to overlap on both petals, I'm going to take this edge right here and I'm going to put it underneath. So that way it looks uniform um, all the way around. And this is what we have so far. Okay, last row. And for that, I chose uh, this really pretty um, jute iridescent mesh. The only thing is, is this one came in a 10 and a half by 10 yards. So I had to cut my pieces 10 and a half by 10 and a half because you want to make sure that it's going to form um, a very nice uh, triangle when you try to form the petal. So again, I'm going to show you guys how to do the petal. For anyone that showed up late. Ahaha, ha, very funny, Nancy. Thank you, Dorothy. Curl side up. Factory edges up at my left and also down at the bottom right. I'm going to bring this corner down. To the bottom and kind of just straighten it out I'm gonna put my thumb on the very bottom corner and up at the top and I'm gonna kind of stretch it and I'm gonna take the my, the right corner and I'm gonna bring it down and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over I'm gonna take my left corner and I'm gonna bring that down to meet the other corner Kind of like there's an imaginary line down there. <laughs> yeah, trendy tree. I saw it at. I also did see it on um, Etsy. At I think it was Fifth Street or something like that. They had this uh, mesh. And then I'm going to come up about three inches. And I'm going to squeeze in the middle. And then pull in my sides. And there is my petal. If you guys hear that noise in the background, it's not music. It's my dog. She's whining to go O-U-T. She's used to her daddy being home, but he's out of town. One more time, we're going to do um, the petal. I'm going to bring the top corner down to meet the bottom. I'm going to flatten it out. Then I'm going to kind of stretch the top and the bottom on my imaginary line. I'm going to bring my right down to meet my bottom center. Then I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to bring my left down to meet the bottom center also. Just kind of line it up and then I go up about three inches and squeeze it together and there is the petal thank you yeah it's a pretty um really pretty mesh very soft colors and with the green and the the fresh green or the fresh green uh, poly burlap and the pink. I think it really sets it off. Okay, so let's get these last petals in row five. Again, I'm using the four original holes, but I'm also sharing the holes. So that gives me a total of eight zip ties in that center. 
It's going to be a little tight when you put the petals in, um, but you want to make sure that you get most of this covered so that when you put your center in, you don't see any of these edges and you don't see, you know, your zip ties and all that. So here we go. And I'm just kind of making sure that it's going to cover everything. Like I said, it's going to get a little tight. And on some of the new boards, there's um, also two holes. You want to kind of make sure that you don't cover um, the ends of your mesh because that's where your center is going to go into. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I love using these boards. It makes uh, breathing so much easier. And, you know, I've got Mindy who calls them the scary boards. But honestly, sometimes I think they're so much easier than trying to do it on a wire wreath frame. Especially when you're trying to make a flower petal. Um... And what I try to do when I'm, especially if I'm doing a, a brand new petal, I'll kind of line my petals up on the board just to make sure that they're going to be nice and uniform and cover um, before I actually zip tie them in. So that usually helps too. Okay, we got three more pieces. I really do like this mesh too. It is very pretty. I know um, you guys can't see it as well as I can, how the, the colors are just popping at me. The boards, if I'm not mistaken, I thought they were, oh, I hate to say the wrong cost. <sighs> Do I want to say they're five something? If I'm wrong, I apologize. Um, I've had uh, boards down in my basement that I wasn't using, especially the large boards I was doing more of the small boards because I was afraid to, you know, make all these large uh, wreaths. But I got to tell you, I will start going back to making the, the larger wreaths. $5.99. I knew it was five something. I just didn't want to say the wrong price and then somebody get mad at me. Okay, last two. Goes. Wow, why is that one looking weird to me? I'll have to fix it. Don't worry. <laughs> For some reason, well, however I folded these petals, they're not looking right. So after the live, I'll take it apart and I'll fix the petals so that they... They're all going the same way. All right, last one. And what I'm going to do again, this is kind of both ends are kind of coming over. I'm going to pick up this and this and put it underneath. So that way it's kind of all uniform going around. Let's get these zip ties cut, then I'll kind of 
show the, what it looks like so far. And then we're going to add the center. Thank you, Tina. So this is what we have so far. I do not have an affiliate account. I wish, but I don't. Okay, so you guys ready for the center? So I did make this center. Thank you, thank you. Um, the little feet I hand sewn and I also hand sewed um, the tail, my little bunny butt. I know everybody's been doing bunny butts, but this is kind of like my take on, on how to do it. So now what we're gonna do, since I have pipe cleaners on the back, remember those two holes that I was telling you about that's in the center of the large flower board? We're going to stick that in there. Of course, mine are a little bit buried. Let's see where they are. There they are. What I should have did was got my needles out. Never fail. Whenever you have problems trying to get your pipe cleaner into your holes because your mesh is sticking up, these needles are wonderful. Little plastic needles. Oh, thank you. Yes, I am going to I I am gonna list them in my shop right after the live, so this weekend, yeah, I will be busy making um, some bunny butts. Okay, there's the first one. Sorry about that. I was hoping that this would be a lot faster to get that in there. Yes, unique in the creek. <laughs> Lesson to be learned, cut your mesh a little bit. <laughs> smaller so you can find the holes to get your centers in. So then what you want to do once you finally get it in, let me kind of untwist it. Is I'm going to pull it down. Don't want to pull it like really tight because I don't want the the little feet to probably just like that and then I'm going to take it and I'm going to do just a couple little twists I learned this from watching Lori all the time how she does it and then I am going to clip my ends Make them a little bit shorter. And then what's nice is that you can stick it back inside the hole in the board. So then that way you don't have to worry about scratching um, anybody's door whatsoever. Because that's like the last thing you want to do is have a customer that got their, their door scratched. And then once you're done with that, then um, you can take... Uh, your business card or 
whatever and put it right over it or sign it or you know whatever and then that way anytime they're looking for a wreath um, they can just check you out by turning your um, turning the back okay I gotta turn my butt around because I put it upside down all right let me bring the camera up There you go. There is the bunny butt. Hi, Phyllis. Thank you so much for joining me. Appreciate it. This is my first live, so, but I'm glad you came. Oh, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Nancy. Oh, thank you, Stacy. Kathy. Oh, thank you, Amy and Brenda. Hi, Angela. Thank you. Hey, Marcella. Thank you, Ruth. Oh, you guys are so sweet. I appreciate it. So it was, as you guys can see, the pedal was fairly easy to do. And using the Unique in the Creek boards um, really is a lifesaver. Um, you just got to pull on the zip tie a little bit. I think that's probably about the hardest thing. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Julie. Uh, next week, um, I'm not sure. Uh, Julie and I were talking about possibly having me maybe do lives every two weeks. Right now at work, we're right in the middle of tax season, so I've been pretty swamped. But we'll see. I'll see what I can do. I got a lot of ideas and... Julie said she has a lot of ideas for me on uh, the reason I'm going to be doing that. So, thank you. Oh, thank you guys. Yes, next week. You're so funny. <laughs> Any other questions everybody, anybody has before? Did you do the bunny during your life? No, I did not. I made the um, the bunny ahead of time. Dreaded tax season, yes. Big time. Once again, here's the finish wreath. I'm this was Dorothy, this is kind of like a prototype um that I did. I made it last night, so I'm still kind of tweaking things, but I will be putting it into my Etsy shop. Thank you, Becky. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. I so appreciate it. I think my nerves were a lot worse than it really was um, doing this. So I do look forward to doing uh, other lives and bringing some different um wreaths to show you guys so i hope you all have a really good night stay safe be blessed and maybe i'll see you guys next week if not the week after bye have a nice evening